Having an easy and effective skincare routine is simple, but judging by the $150 billion skincare industry with thousands of products promising perfect skin, it can be confusing to navigate through the marketing. So let's bypass all of that. And in this video, I'm going to share a simple and affordable skincare routine for men and women that actually works. And by works, I mean our skin is healthy and it looks good. This skincare routine has only three products and is good for anti-aging, dry and oily skin. And I'll also include two supplements that are great for skin health too. The first product is a cleanser. I use the CeraVe Foaming Cleanser. In the evening, I use a small amount on a face cloth to remove my makeup, but it can also be foamed in the hands with water, applied to the face then washed off. I like this one because it's gentle and it's cheap. And a few pointers about cleansers. Use a gentle cleanser so it doesn't strip your skin of its natural oils and weaken the protective barrier. If your skin is tight after cleansing, it may be a sign that your cleanser is too strong and your skin barrier is being compromised. A lot of cleansers for oily skin contain strong ingredients which remove most of the skin's natural oil. And if you have oily skin, this may sound like a good thing, but then the skin retaliates and thinks, hold on, we haven't got as much oil left, so let's make more. It can be a vicious cycle. And there's an irony when it comes to cleansing our face. When we do it, we're not only cleaning away dirt, makeup, stuff like that, we're also cleaning away our skin's natural oil. Then we apply a man-made moisturizer to replace the precious oil that we just cleansed away. When I think about it, it's madness. If you're going to bed with clean skin, which I hope you would be, it could be that you don't need to use a cleanser in the morning and instead washing your face with water would be enough. That way you're utilizing your skin's natural oil and keeping your skin barrier intact. When I was recommended to wash my face with water in the morning, I couldn't believe my ears. A bit of water and then you're good. That yeah. blows my, that literally <laughs> blows my mind. As an ex-beauty salon owner, this went against everything that I'd ever been taught. And I thought, well, surely if I'm not cleansing my skin, then it will be dirty but I'm cleaning my skin before I go to bed, so I'm waking up with clean skin. Too much cleansing, using strong products, or using too many products can weaken our skin's barrier, which can then cause dryness, irritation, sensitivity, and skin issues. So then we use more products to try and fix the skin issues, creating more aggravation. The skin will be in a constant state of repair, trying to regenerate what the products are breaking down and removing. And I can't believe I only just learnt this at age 42. So for the last four months, I've been putting this washing my face with water in the morning thing to the test. And the results have been astonishing. At first, it was a bit weird to feel the natural oil on my skin as I'd been washing it off for years. But as soon as I got used to it, I was convinced to carry on when my skin's appearance and texture quickly improved. Next up is an SPF. The sun can cause damage to the skin, resulting in skin aging, pigmentation, and damage to collagen and elastic fibers. And wearing a sunscreen can help reduce that skin damage and skin aging. In the morning, I use the Ultra Wrist Face Fluid SPF 50. It works great, I like the way it feels, and it's affordable. I prefer to use a natural zinc oxide sunscreen, but I can't find one that I like. The key with an SPF is choose one that is broad spectrum, which protects against UVA and UVB. Go for an SPF 30 or higher. Use one that you like the feel of, because then you're more likely to wear it every day. And wear it every day, even when the sun isn't out. I'll link to all the products that I talk about in this video in the description. So that's the morning skincare routine covered. Just two products, and maybe one if you're cleaning your face with water. How easy is that? And of course, if you have a specific skin condition, then seek professional advice because everything that I'm speaking about in this video may not be suitable for everybody. So now for the evening skincare routine, which is just as simple. I use the cleanser to remove my makeup and debris from the day. Then it's time for the good stuff. I use tretinoin, which is a retinoid, a form of vitamin A. And if you've heard of tretinoin, chances are you know how incredible this product is. It's usually prescribed to treat acne, however, it's also used for anti-aging and pigmentation. 
and it's proven to increase the production of collagen and elastic fibers in the skin, making the skin thicker and more elastic, and it increases skin cell renewal, resulting in new skin cells coming to the surface quicker. Tretinoin is a prescription only product, so it can be a little bit tricky to get, but once you've got the prescription, you've got it, and trust me when I say this is a miracle product, but if you can't or don't want to use tretinoin, I will give you a great alternative in a minute that you can easily buy from anywhere. Tretinoin itself is cheap, but it's the private prescription that bumps the price up, but this stuff works. And even with the private prescription, it's likely that you'll spend less money on this than all the other skincare products that don't actually do much. Tretinoin comes in three strengths and I started with the 0.025% four months ago and now I'm on the 0.05% and it's working like nothing else I've ever used. My skin is more elastic and plump. So for example, when, <laughs> when I do that, it bounces back. The appearance is much smoother with a dewy finish. And I'm told in the comments of my videos and by some people at the gym that my skin has improved in the last few months, which is nice because it's a sign that my skincare routine is working. It can take a few months for the skin to adapt to the tretinoin, which can cause some dryness, sensitivity and irritation. But these are a sign that the product is working. And after that transition period, the results are totally worth it. Because of this dryness, you may need a moisturizer. And I'll talk about moisturizers later in the video. Tretinoin is only applied sparingly at night and it can make the skin more sensitive to the sun, which makes it even more important to use an SPF as part of your morning routine. I'm trying to film this skin, oh, Kevin. Sorry. I've got mum at the door and I've got Charlie drinking water out of the sink. <laughs> if you don't want to or can't use tretinoin, then a great alternative is using a retinol. A retinol is a weaker form of tretinoin and retinols are readily available without a prescription from plenty of places. Before using tretinoin, I used retinols for years and got great results. I used the ones by The Ordinary, working my way up in strength over a number of years. These retinols are great, they give really good results and are also affordable. And so that's the evening skincare routine. Cleanse, then apply a retinoid or retinol it really is that simple. A lot of what I'm talking about in this video, I learned from dermatologist, Dr. Abs, and I've got my full 45 minute consultation with him on the members area of my channel. I'll link how to get to the members area in the description. In the last few months, my skincare routine has gone from this to this, and my skin is better as a result, as is my bank balance. I'd love to hear what your skincare routine is and the results you get from it. Perhaps you're doing something similar to me. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. After going through this science-based skincare routine, you may be wondering about moisturizers and things like collagen, hyaluronic acid, antioxidants, seaweed extract, and that single drop of a rare flower petal squeezed between the legs of a virgin bride at the top of a mountain during a full moon. Are you ready for this? Most of it is a load of old rubbish. And if you can give me a few minutes, I will explain. The main ingredients in most moisturizers are glycerine, squalene, caprylic triglyceride, which is derived from coconut oil, jojoba oil, shea butter, or fatty acids coming from things like olive oil. Look at a cheap moisturizer and you'll likely see these ingredients. Look at an expensive moisturizer and you'll likely see these ingredients. And these base ingredients are cheap. The only difference is in the expensive products, they've been mixed with fancy things, pushed through a billion dollar marketing machine, which results in the skin creams costing tens, if not hundreds of dollars. Regardless of the price, the thing that all moisturizers do is create a layer on the surface of the skin to prevent transepidermal water loss, just like our skin's natural oil. So it could be that you don't actually need a moisturizer. The natural oil in your skin may be enough. That's if you're not washing it away. But if you do want to use a moisturizer, either because your skin is dry or you're transitioning to a retinoid or retinol, then you may benefit from a moisturizer. So instead of using an expensive cream, there are three options that work wonders for moisturizing the skin. A natural organic oil like jojoba oil, 
squalene, which is almost identical to our skin's natural oil, or my personal favorite is tallow, which is rendered beef fat, but don't worry, it doesn't smell like beef. And I use this when my skin goes dry from the tretinoin, and it's fantastic. These are all very affordable and have a similar structure to our skin's natural oil. And they're only one natural ingredient, which will then support our skin barrier, rather than using chemicals that can weaken our skin barrier. In the morning, if you need it, use a tiny amount under your SPF. And in the evening, if using a retinol, apply this over the top and use so much that your face is shiny. And a quick note to say, for the skin on your body, apply similar principles. Use gentle body washes and moisturize using a natural oil to prevent water loss. And it goes without saying, good nutrition and excellent sleep will work wonders for skin health, but you already know all of that. So now let's talk about two supplements that work great in conjunction with the science-based skincare routine. One quick way to improve your skin is with omega-3, either with food, supplements, or both. Omega-3 is found in oily fish such as salmon, mackerel, and sardines, but you can also take it in an oil or capsules. This omega-3 will work from the inside out, helping produce healthy and moisturized skin. And if you've ever seen someone who's got small dry flaky patches at the top of their arm, that can be a sign of omega-3 deficiency. Eating collagen rich foods will also improve the skin significantly. And collagen is found in bone marrow, chicken skin and chicken cartilage, which I don't know about you, I don't eat a lot of that stuff. So instead I take a hydrolyzed collagen powder. I was skeptical before trying this, but it seems to have worked. And several of my friends who are taking it have reported the same things. I've been taking this for six months and my fingernails are noticeably stronger and my hairdresser told me that my hair had got thicker, even though I hadn't told him that I was taking this. Can you genuinely notice a difference? Genuinely, yeah. Like, it's just stronger through the road, absolutely. Wow, that's mega. It took about four months to notice a difference because it took that long for my nails and my hair to grow through, and I can't be sure if it's had an effect on my skin, but given that nails, hair, and skin are all made of similar cells, then my guess is that it has. I use this powder because it's hydrolyzed, which means it's easily digested and absorbed by the body. And this one is cheap, really cheap, especially compared to other brands. So the routine looks like this. Morning, wash with water, SPF. Evening, cleanse, retinoid or retinol. Maybe a few drops of oil. Take omega-3 and collagen. How simple is that? YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video next, so maybe give that a watch.